Ah, it's Monday. It's Monday noon. And we have uh, Marianne uh, Sasaki. She joins us by Skype from New York. Because, you know, one way or the other, we, we need to do He Said, She Said. That's our show here at 12 noon every, every other Monday. So welcome from New York, Marianne. Greetings from the Big Apple, Jay. Yeah. Now we have, we're gonna, we agreed to talk about uh, gun violence today. In fact, you did a commentary over the weekend on it. And we'll play that uh, as time goes by. But um, I wanted to style this um, uh, gun violence in America uh, an unraveling. We have only half an hour to talk about it, so we have to move fast. So can you give us a praise about what happened here? I, that's a good question. What's going on? What's, what's, what's different from, let's say, 30 years ago when there wasn't the proliferation of guns or 50 years ago and today? And I have a very, you know, I have one answer in a nutshell, and I, I think it's the lobbying efforts of the NRA. The lobbying efforts of the NRA have resulted in an uptick tick in the sales of guns in this country, in the sales of automatic weapons, and uh, the concomitant violence that goes with, with having so, so many weapons. I think there are um, 50 million uh, guns in the country. There's only like 300 million people, so that's so a lot of people with guns. This reminds me of cars, actually. You know, uh, we have a lot of cars. We, have a lot, we sell a lot of cars. Some families have more cars than they can possibly use. Um, in, the, in the state of Hawaii, um, there's more cars than people, believe it or not. And when I say people, I mean men, women, and children, people. Um, right. so, and, and, and they're made well. They last a long time. Uh, and the same thing with guns. They're made well. They last for lifetimes. Right. Uh, really, forever. There's hardened steel. Um, they keep on working. You don't have to do a lot of maintenance to keep them going. And, you know, you, you collect them. A lot of people collect them. A lot of people have many, many, many guns in the, on the back shelf. And so, yeah, um, the result is an enormous number of guns. They, they come into the consumer marketplace, but they don't really leave the consumer marketplace. And, and you know, I'd like to take a point out of your uh, commentary. Uh, and I think this is an operative feature. If you have one, you think about using it. You, you know, you always think about what you might do with that gun. And I think a lot of people do it, whatever it may be. I think so. I think, you know, it's like any tool that you, um, you acquire. It's, it's now part of your skill set, and it's a way, uh, you know, it, it, it's part of your skill set. I mean, for example, I don't own a gun. I would never think of resolving anything by a gun. So, I, I mean, that's just an anecdotal, obviously, but it just never would even come into my mind. But if you have it, obviously, you've got to think, well, I'm going to use it. Why buy it if you're not going to use it? Now, the question, it becomes, wh what do you use it for? You know, I mean, what do you really need an assault rifle for? What is, what is a, what know, is a, you know, a person now, need? You know, assault? it's been said that you, you need to have a gun to protect yourself you know, from criminals, I suppose. Um, and maybe there's a point there, except that the criminals have guns too. And so you heighten the stakes when you and the criminal are going to have a shootout. Uh, somebody will die and you're likely to be the one because you're not experienced in these matters. Right. But I always think that's a ludicrous argument because um, there, there'd be less, you know, of this kind of mass uh, murder or violence if more people had guns. But you know what? I don't know very many people that would be able to retain their calm and cool in a in a crisis situation and be able to utilize a weapon. Untrained people. I, I mean, I oh. just don't. I just they don't hurt somebody. They might hurt themselves. The other the other uh, the other point that's been made is uh, well, you need the guns to protect yourself from an unruly government, from a government that's run amok. Um, and you know, my my reaction to that is uh, well, wait a minute. The government has an unlimited amount of guns. And if you want to have a shootout with the government, they win. And oh. even if they don't win on day one, they'll win on day two, three, or four. You will not survive that. And nobody ever has. When the government decides it's going to you know, pit their guns against your guns, you lose. So right. there's no point in having a gun to defend yourself against an unruly government. If you want to fix the government, then vote. <laughs> Well, I find it fascinating that the implicit message of the NRA is that you need a gun against the encroaching federal government, and yet they have such conservative values, but 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 in they, they sort of are spreading that grassroots radicalism. I it's, I find that very very disturbing. Um, you know, 
what occurred in the United States at the time of the Continental Congress is a very unique moment in history, and we're not likely to see uh, the need for well-armed militia in any time in the near future, I think, in the United States. So, I mean, it's nice that we preserve the right to, to have it, but I don't think the government, I can't imagine us rising up against the government in that fashion. Yeah, well, um, and what is the militia anyway? I mean, I, you know, I, I think I've been raised to, to see the militia as the National Guard. But the National Guard has become part of the military. It's called up in times of war or catastrophe. Um, it's not like a bunch of citizens who organize themselves. I don't think there really is a militia. There isn't any militias. So no. what are we talking about here? Yeah. Not, not militias the way the, our forefathers contemplated them. Guns are, being, are not being used the way our forefathers contemplated them. I mean, I, 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 you know, I have to imagine they thought of them as tools for hunting and... Um, tools maybe to defend the family homestead uh, from encroachers and uh, maybe a weapon to be picked up when you're going to re revolt against England. But uh, I, d I really don't think that they uh, could envision a, uh, so somebody stepping in to say a... Well, I, I don't think the forefathers, um, you know, contemplated what, what has happened here. I mean, we have such racial strife and, and if we have guns all around, then the guns have got to be involved in the racial strife and they are. Right. Right. Uh, and, and we now have more street violence, uh, more shooting and killing in this country than, um, you know, a person for person uh, than really anywhere. Um, right. And uh, we're, we're an embarrassment to ourselves. I mean, there, I mean, what people, so. countries, I, other countries are warning their citizens not to come here. I agree. Uh, so, uh, gee whiz, this is, this is tragic. And so many factors have some, somehow come together and well, guns are at the center of it. What about our do-nothing Congress, who refuses to even vote against even the slightest gun control measures? What do you think of those guys? But the, the Republicans. Repub you mean the Republicans, don't you? Yes, yes. But I, but I think the Democrats are 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 responsible too. Because what kinds of measures are these? Oh, if you're on the no-fly list, you can't have a a a, a gun. It doesn't That's mean a anything. Very weak yeah. soup, yeah. I think. Well, I would tell you, I, I had dinner last night with an old friend of mine from Australia. And uh, they don't have a problem with gun control in Australia. Because one day they decided that nobody could have a gun anymore, or at least very few people could have guns anymore. And they said, put the gun in the basket, and we are going to chop off the barrel, and we're going we're gonna to smelt it so it's liquid, you know, molten steel, and there'll be no more guns. And, people, and if you don't do that, we're going to fine you or put you in jail. And right. the result is that people gave up their guns, and now there are very few guns left in Australia. This is a good thing, don't you think? I agree. I wish we could do it. But you know what? The NRA will never let that happen. But I think there's a solution. And the solution, I think, is a, an intersection of interests um, with respect to um, uh, controlling uh, arms. I think the government has an interest in controlling arms. I think m marginal, you know, not marginalized, but, but certain groups like lesbians and gays who were attacked, people who were targeted blacks, for example, I think different groups all have different reasons for wanting to limit the number of guns. And I think all these groups need to get together. And I think they need to bring the power of their um, voices against the monolithic voice of the NRA that keeps pushing for more and more and more, more dangerous and, you know, more access to Well, guns. what's the relationship between the NRA and, and Congress? What's the relationship between the NRA and Republicans? Well, that you know the the N the NRA. Um, I, I looked at the top uh, uh, con uh, people that the NRA contributed to, and it's the Republican National Committee. It's um, it's various Republican committees of various states, and then g going down the line, it's Republican candidates. But you know what? I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call this a Republican issue because I'm sure there are Democrats that take money from the NRA as well, and it's just. It's just, they're just too powerful. They're just incredibly, incredibly powerful. I can't see how they could be so powerful because this gets worse and worse. And the common denominator of all these the hideous incidents is guns. Too many right. people having too many guns. You know, there was an article in the Times over the weekend. I, I'm guessing you saw it too. Uh, and it was about the fact that there were some 15 or 20 um, guys walking around in that event where the shootings took place. Uh, who had uh, uh, long guns I in saw public, that. That and, and, we're, and they're wearing uh, camouflage outfits and black jackets and 
a bulletproof vest and are walking around. And, and when the shooting started, the police, those of whom you know could focus on what to do, they couldn't figure out what to do because they were they were confused by the fact that there were people walking around with guns in the crowd who were not police. Um, and this you know this is Texas, and Texas is really way out on this. We can't have this. No. You know, it's funny because in a way, that's a free speech issue. I mean, obviously, it's a right to carry issue. But dressing in camouflage and looking a certain way, looking like a certain paramilitary person, that's a way of expressing yourself. Well, we don't have the unlimited right to express ourselves in this way in, 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 this, way in this country when it's a danger to a, a group of people, it's a danger to people at large. I think, you know... Uh, holding yourself out as a military person by dressing in camouflage and carrying a long gun, I think that's that that's that's not indicative of, of of any any right or it's not emblematic of any right that I see in the Constitution. Why, why am I reminded of uh, was it Justice Black who talked about um, shouting fire in a crowded movie theater? Exactly. That was not protected. <laughs> exactly, and this is the same thing. You can't bring. There was I I saw the article and there was this guy with an automatic weapon in ca full cla camouflage. The police thought, you know, he was possibly one of the um, ass uh, 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 assailants because, uh, well, um, an, any normal person would. Well, you know what? You don't have the right to do that. You don't have the right to walk around in camouflage with a gun because you're, 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 you're holding yourself out as something that you're, you're not. You're not. Yeah. You and, th and this goes to the point of the militia again. I mean, there's these militia uh, I don't know, quasi-illegal militias that hole up somewhere and do illegal things there, um, and then the government has to root them out because they're doing bad things even to their own members. How many times has that has happened over the past several years? And guns are at the center of that one, too. And if that's a protected right, I'll be, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, what's really funny. There was one group in California, anti, you know, federal government, anti-government group. They were holed up and uh, the, uh, the, not the DEA, but some section of the FBI, the firearms section of the FBI was, you know, they were in a standoff, right? And these guys who were against everything the federal government stands for wanted Po their postage, their post postal package. They they wanted food sent to them by the post office. So now these guys are against the federal government, right? But they want to use the services of the federal government, right? So people don't even know what they're talking about when they they, they say they're opposed to the government. They, people are opposed to the government, but yet they want you know their social security. Well, you're and touching on another element here. You know, this is an intersection. Guns are not the only thing at the intersection. There's a you know a dis dis uh, a disconnection with government, and people don't treat government as their government anymore. They you know they worry about government infringing on their rights. They worry about the government do things like in uh, Nazi Germany. They worry about the worst things coming out of government, and so you have a distrust, uh, and then you have guns that supposedly that would protect you from the government, but you have a distrust of of the police, and the police have a distrust of you, and we're unraveling. Arguably, we're at war. This is like the Civil War all over again. It's an internal civil war. And I'd like to take one minute for everybody to think about that. And we come back, I'd like to talk about how we're going to fix it. It won't be easy. We'll do it in 15 minutes. That's Marianne Sasaki. Here we are on He Said, She Said, talking about gun violence in America and unraveling. We'll be right back. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov, and I am the host of Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea brings lawyers, mostly lawyers, uh, to the audience of ThinkTech to talk about ways that lawyers not just represent clients, but bring people together across the sea. Law can be a means to bring people together, not just fighting, but resolving problems, working together, and discovering cultures that help us make a peaceful world. And that's part of my goal here, is to bring lawyers into the audience of Hawaii to explain the background that they have and the ways that we in Hawaii can progress through the law to reach across the sea. Thank you very much. Aloha. OK, welcome back to He Said, She Said, Marianne Sasaki and me. We do this every now and then. Today we're talking about gun violence in America 
an unraveling question mark. Maybe it's not so much a question mark. So, you know, here we are, and you know, and during the break, we're talking about how, you know, this is, this is really awful, and, and it's hard not to be excited about it. It's hard not to be frightened by it. I mean, this is like the country doesn't trust itself. The country is not so much a country as it used to be. This is a long way from Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Where are the high ideals now when everybody's shooting each other in the street? Um, this you know, sounds like we're moving into anarchy. So, so my question to you, and we have 15 minutes to address this, so talk fast. Okay. Is how do we fix it? Got it. Well, I, I, I'm with the Australians. You described a situation which Australia asked everybody to turn in their guns. And if they didn't, then they would be uh, incarcerated. And I, I'm, you know, I don't believe in this case in half measures. I think we should get the guns off the streets. You know, policemen think we should get the guns off the streets. The government thinks we should we should moderate the kinds of guns that are available to the citizenry. It, 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 everybody agrees with this. This is not a. They may not agree to the extent that I say, where I think nobody should have a gun except uh, you know maybe police officers in the army. But but everybody, every right thinking person to some extent or other wants some form of gun control and we had it and it expired and we lived with it for a long long time until until the NRA decided to you know well, you, get, you get three factors working one is well maybe four you get this uh, accumulation of guns that's happening relentlessly two is you get the uh, the power of the NRA and despite all the things like Sandy Hook is a good example uh, yes. all the things happening they still you know get money and they still are effectively lobby, mostly Republicans in Congress. And then you have the racial strife, and you have this distrust of the government. All these, it's a, it's a really volatile cocktail. And now right. here we are, we're in deep kimchi, actually. And so, you know, you say, well, let's get everybody to turn in the guns like Australia, but, but what about the NRA? How do you get around that? Right. Or do we have to wait until we have so many tragedies where it's just so tragic all day, every day, I mean, nothing's coming to that. But I mean, there have been three or four tragedies in the past few days. I really feel that we've had it. I mean, I, I don't... Look, if after Sandy Hook, the NRA could not come out with some kind of statement, at least... I mean, they... You know, do you know that um, uh, 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 the NRA, people joining the NRA, there was an uptick after Sandy Hook? They lobbied even harder after yeah. Sandy Hook. Well, defensive lobbying. They were afraid they were going to be, you know, undermined somehow by, by the event in Sandy Hook that people would rise up against them, so they worked all the harder. Right. But, you know, you know one thing comes to mind. I mean, it's the modern day with social media and all that, and, and maybe people in general out there across the country can come together on this, all sides of the issue, including the police, and they can do social media on the NRA and say, you guys better stop. And that means don't give any money to the, the legislature, to do any legislature. A lot of legislatures statewide have been bought by the NRA. Right. And, 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 and a campaign on every legislature and every, con every congressperson telling them, don't take money from the NRA. We've got to get past this. This is a, a sick situation, and we have to work together on it. You can't be doing business as usual. What do you think about that? I think it's coming to that because, as you know, uh, the, uh, a group of Democrats, uh, the congressmen and some senators, sat in on the House floor in opposition to the Republicans um, n not wanting to vote on, not even vote, not, not, we're not saying vote in any specific way, take any specific measures, they just didn't even want to vote for it. So the, the Democrats, you know, they, they upended the rules of decorum in the House. I, I mean, if you're having situations like this, where you're having congressmen sit in and not f follow the rules of the, 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 the institution which they're a, a part of, it's, it, that is an unraveling. I mean, it... it well, that's it, not what the, the founders intended. That's not the way the system's supposed to... This is like the Supreme Court confirmation. That's not the way the system is. You know, that's, that's game playing at the worst. And, uh, you know, I, you know what I like to do? I like to call up, using Skype, the most advanced version of Skype, and call up the founders. Get them on the phone. I wish. And ask them what they think about this and what they would do. And uh, I think people might listen to them now. Yes, maybe. <laughs> but, you know, I, I mean, I would, it, well, you know, 
people think they have a, 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 a direct line to the founders. Uh, unfortunately, I, nobody does. But, you know, I, I really think we're, at, we're really reaching a tipping point here where there's going to be enough discrete groups for whom guns are a really, really big issue that they're going to come together and there's going to be maybe a march on Washington. Or maybe it'll, it'll happen via social media. Probably will happen via social media where there'll be enough people will get together accretively and, and have the power to, to, you know, basically you have to not vote for the candidates that the NRA supports. That's, it, you have to be very programmatic about it and vote, vote those guys out and let them know why you're voting them out too. How does this affect the election coming soon? I heard, uh, I heard some talk by um, uh, Donald Trump, uh, and I think he was right. He was saying we have to, we have to train the police better. Uh, it's, it sort of starts with them. They've got to be more careful. Uh, of course, they're scared. You know, That's what happened in Minnesota. The, the cop was scared, and he didn't know what to do with it, so he shot somebody dead. Um, right. and, and that's really tragic. We've we got to do better at training, at selecting and training the cops. Uh, we got to make them really professional every time, every circumstance. I think that's right. I, I think, I think, uh, well, there's, I think there's too much, but the CIA, I think also there's too much militarization in the police force. I think that police are, are armed with, with weapons that they, that they can't, I think you're right. I think they need, they need better training. But, you know, did you hear that Donald Trump said he was the law and order candidate? Did you hear him say that? I'm the law and order candidate. Yeah, I did hear him say that. Yeah. That's reminiscent. I'm not of sure if that really helps. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> what happened to tasers? You know, Marianne, didn't we have a whole you know generation of tasers where you could stop somebody without hurting them? What I happened? Don't remember the good old days of tasers, Jerry. Yeah. Jerry. Okay. Jerry. <laughs> no, I mean I really uh, I I keep waiting for somebody to pull out a taser and 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 you know uh, sort of defuse the situation that way, but they never do that. They pull out an assault rifle. <laughs> So how are we going to fix this? I mean, what's the first step? I mean, the first step is that people talk to each other and... and, and That's the problem. <laughs> that, that, I wanted to say that. If you, if you have two people there standing with a gun, whether it's a, an intruder in your house and you, where, you know, the gun from, uh, you know, on your night, nightstand, or uh, a cop and somebody he, he, you know, feels is committing a crime, um, when they both got guns... The chances of a, a you know a shootout are so much greater than if they didn't. You know, there's no there's no chance to have a, a calm discussion because both sides are fra afraid. You know, that's like I'm sorry to refer to animals, but dogs. You know, if dogs are afraid, they become dangerous. Isn't that true? That's a regular rule of dealing with a with a dangerous dog. If they are afraid, they become dangerous. And people are the same way. So if you have people in an old in a in a, a confrontation that are afraid, you're going to have, some, and they have guns, you're going to have this happen. So I think you've got to take guns away. You've got to train the police better. My own view is Australia is right um, because there's no point in citizens having guns except for limited use like hunting. Um, and I suppose that, that was an exception in Australia. But, and, and if, until we do this, until we take some really strong, decisive, uni, you know, uni, universal action in this country, where everybody agree it's going to get worse. And the problem is, in my view, that if it gets worse beyond a certain, certain tipping point, and we may be past certain tipping points already, then it's unrecapturable. You can't I fix think it. We're past the tipping point. I, I, think, I, I, you know, I think we're so far past uh, the, the point of being of someplace like Australia where you can say to people, all right, volitionally give up your guns. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I think we just have to start at regulation. I mean, we have to get some, there's no regulate, no, reg, it's unregulated. It's an unregulated market. I mean, imagine if, well, imagine if cars were like unregulated in this way. Anybody could drive a car, any, and you could drive a hot rod down the street, something, an Indianapolis 500 car, you could drive that on the, on a highway or, uh, for, drugs were not regulated or, they're not, Guns are not regulated. Any any attempt at regulating uh, gun sales, uh, people start howling about the Second Amendment. The NRA starts howling about the Second Amendment. But gun so, dealers have to. They gotta. They they can't be doing this. They gotta be either put out of business or very closely regulated. And I'll tell you, one thought occurs to me is that there ought to be an amnesty program for the the people who would be willing to give up guns. Well, you know, New York City did that actually. Did it work? They did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They they um. 
uh, one year, I, I remember, I, I it was about, I guess, 20 years ago, they said, basically, um, turn in your illegal, turn in your illegal firearms, no questions will be asked, just come and turn them in and nothing will happen to you. And they, and they got a really, a, a, a pretty large turnout, as I recall. I mean, people were, people understood that that was a benefit to them, actually, in the end. So, um yeah. I, you know, I know a lot of people, Jay. I know a lot of really smart people. I know a lot of really physically fit people. I don't know anybody that I would trust with a gun. I swear to you. I mean, my col, you know, in the legal community, I can't. I, I'd be very hard put to say. You know that fellow? He should have a gun. Do you? Do you know people you think? Oh, they, aside from like law enforcement or or uh, or uh, police. Do you, I mean, do you, they're just not trained well enough to own to, to carry a gun to own a gun it's also a mindset you have to you have to be completely rational all the time um you know I mean, having um having a beer uh, in, a, in a in a bar and having a gun that's a bad recipe remember, yes, remember yeah. what happened with that secret service guy who who shot somebody dead here a few years ago um anyway i mean uh, we're out of time but i think it's a good conversation we have to continue it uh and i think we all ought to be talking about it and maybe the social media idea is good, the amnesty idea is good, retraining of the police is good. And, and uh, I mean, this is not going to encourage policemen, or rather applicants, to, for police jobs to, to you know, apply for those jobs. Uh, police, policing becomes more dangerous now, and uh, you really wonder who, who uh, in his right mind would apply to be a, a policeman right now. I, I agree. I think, I think it's a very dangerous, very dangerous job and not as well paid as it ought to be, actually. Yeah. Well, I hope, I hope uh, other people are thinking right about this and uh, look forward to talking with you some more about it, Marianne. I can't wait to see you. The same I'm, here. I love New York, but I miss, I miss Hawaii. <laughs> Hawaii's well, home now. Give, give everyone in New York our, our best regards, Marianne. I will. I will. <laughs> All three people that I'm going to see. <laughs>